All right, Smoky Investment Team Spring Football Practice Report indoors after a heavy rainstorm hit us overnight and uh, a little bit of more of the same. There was nobody missing from practice today. It uh, multiple glances and uh, look who I got here, Jacques Doucet with WAP. I'm glad you took roll because I didn't. You taking roll in spring? Well, I leaned on Wilson Alexander. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. No, nothing serious here, folks, on March the 26th. 2024. Absolutely. Uh, so now we've been a multiple of these spring football practices. You were there on Saturday. Um, you know, when we go indoors, it's kind of like we're doing a synopsis on these reports of what we've seen overall. Is there anything that's standing out that's a concern besides the defensive line? You know, I sometimes joke that we could pop in some footage of uh, last year and nobody would tell the difference, although there's a lot of different players out there. Old, old number five, Jay Daniels, isn't out there anymore. But, uh, you know, I think it's a case of getting to interview Garrett Nussmeyer and to hear him say 10 wins isn't the standard anymore. Uh, we've got we've to take this to the next level this year. Uh, he's been on the roster since 2021, right? So after three years, he's only started one game, and that being the bowl game or like West Bowl against Wisconsin. So this is finally his team, so to speak. They they brought in A.J. Swan to kick the tires on him a little bit and see if he can compete uh, from – well, what it's worth, it seems right now that Swan is third, maybe in terms of the order they're going in drills. Ricky Collins is going second right now. Uh, I know that Coach Kelly has said that the backup quarterback spot is a uh, is a spot that has high competition. But yeah, in terms of uh, concerns, uh, we were out there. We had a chance to watch the whole practice Saturday, and you and I were down there. And they, I don't know what you call it, thud, but they're running 11 on 11 plays. And a couple times, Josh Williams is kind of all by his lonesome breaking it up the middle. And so, is that a big concern that there's no defensive lineman there to stop him? Now, after one interception, one of, uh, say, Ryan's three picks, uh, so one of the LSU staffers said, we've intercepted more passes the last two days than we did all of last year. Now, is that propaganda? Is that red meat to throw to fans to get him excited? I don't know, but it does seem like they are improving in the second And Sage Ryan is, is the star. Yeah, yeah. Well, so he's been picked on. I mean, he came in with high expectations, right? He was a five star. Has he been played out of position? He has, to be to be fair to him, a little bit. And but yeah, it's um, look what we see at practice. Like we still don't know exactly what style of defense they're going to run. Uh, when, you know, obviously we we're there the whole day on Saturday, but what we saw on Saturday was not the full defense running the ones and exactly what they're going to do and what sets they're going to be in most of the time. Um, and look, uh, there's no doubt that they've got to bring some defensive linemen in here, but you know, are they going to a, a 3 3 5, et cetera? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see, but um, there's no doubt the offense is ahead of the defense, um, but there's also a big emphasis on the run game. And uh, one thing I do notice is Frank Wilson getting after Caleb Jackson a good bit. And that tells me that he really, you know, he wants Caleb Jackson to rise up and be the guy. And yeah. that's why he's on him and making sure they're doing a lot of pass blocking uh, drills. And, and uh, to me, I, I'm assuming, I, I wonder if we asked Brian Kelly, you know, if there was one thing that keep, keeps Caleb Jackson from being the number one back, what is it? Yeah. And I, I'm assuming it would be, you know, pass blocking. Well, last year when Coach Kelly would talk about Caleb Jackson, it, it was a little like Quincy Wiggins. You know, Quincy didn't start playing football until a little bit later. Now, Caleb's been playing football his whole life, but his knowledge of the game was a little lacking, it seemed like. he's. I think what Coach Kelly said last year is he's still learning the game, like certain rules that you took that you thought he would know right offhand. He, he didn't know. And so that's always the deal, you know, whether it's John Emery or whoever the case may be. If you go in and get the quarterback killed, you're coming out. So it doesn't matter how what your talent is running the football or, uh, and catching the football. But certainly the physical tools, the ooh, ah plays he made last year in particular at Mississippi State where he killed a guy almost running over him. Uh, but, yeah, there's really only, and no offense to anybody else, but there's really only two running backs of significance out here, right? Josh right. Williams and Caleb Jackson. So you're still waiting on the freshman and then the whole very unfortunate uh Trey Holly situation. Absolutely. Uh, I got a chance to watch tight ends today. I think Mason Taylor's, gonna, you know, if he stays healthy, is going to have a bounce back season. I know a lot of people thought that last year was maybe a disappointment after such a great freshman year. I think that group is going to be a lot more important to Garrett Nussmeyer than last year, uh, particularly because that's, that's an addition, 
you know, when you know that Jake Daniels' numbers aren't going to be there running the football, that dump off to the tight end can be big for him. Yeah, I looked at his numbers last year. They were about the same as his freshman year, so I guess you expected him to take a jump his sophomore year. It's kind of crazy that he's already a junior. Just seems like the other day we were sitting down with him for the first time talking about, you know, his famous dad, Jason Taylor, and uh, his, uh, you know, his mother, who's very athletic as well. Uh, you know, that season opener against Florida State in the Superdome where he catches the pass and had the wherewithal to get out of bounds to set up the final touchdown to Jare Jenkins and then the extra point gets blocked. And then, of course, back here in Tiger Stadium, a moment that we'll remember for the rest of our lives, two-point conversion against Alabama his freshman year. But I agree with you. Certainly, he can be a quarterback's best friend in terms of dumping it off, uh, safety valve, big, strong target, and uh, very interested to see what he does as a junior. All right, this practice report brought to you by the Smokey Investment Team. Barton Bryan Smokey, almost 40 years in the financial business. Give them a call, 318-448-3201. Let the Smokey Investment Team help you to reach your financial goals, no matter what it is. In this day and age, you need the best help you can get, and there's no finer people than Barton Bryan Smokey at the Smokey Investment Team. Again, give them a call, 318-448-3201. Both LSU grads. And uh, again, I've known them for over 20 years. They're the best in the business. Security and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered financial advisor, member FINRA slash SIPC, the Smokey Investment Team. Um, Jacques, um, just to uh, switch gears a little bit, I don't think we're gonna get Kim Mulkey before they head to Albany. We see that now they're gonna face UCLA. Did you get a chance to watch any of that? I watched the game last night. Um, they've got a 6-7 post. I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but uh, certainly I think uh, Creighton, their tallest player, was 6-1, and so they had a hard time. They, they had her doubled for a long time and kind of kept her neutralized. Then the UCLA guards kicked it into a higher gear there in the third and fourth quarter. I, I, I did not walk away from it saying, ooh, damn, I'm really scared. I mean, certainly if LSU plays their potential, uh, they, they can win that game, and then if – you know, Iowa obviously uh, beats Colorado. Then you've got uh, you've got the rematch to go to the Final Four between uh, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark uh, there in Albany, New York. So, uh, you do know, we know what day it's going to be yet? We know that LSU is playing UCLA Saturday. Okay. And so, if they win that game, they would stay over there Easter. And it'd be a Monday. It'd be a Monday night prom time. Monday night. Holy game. cow. And okay. I believe it's noon on Saturday. Um, that's what I heard. They said, several people told me that ESPN said it'll be on noon Saturday. The second game is 2.30. It was either noon or 2.30. So, uh, and by the way, Colorado can absolutely beat Iowa. Yeah. And, so, But if, if it doesn't happen, that's a dream TV matchup. We know about the big you know, view numbers that uh, that game had in the Final Four last year. And for that to be a Monday night game, I'm, you know, whatever time they, they, they would give it, that that – uh, that's going to be a big, big, big game. Well, there are some fans out there of the underdogs, so to speak, who are unhappy with the way some of these games are being officiated. And certainly there was a big discrepancy in the free throws the other day here in the PMAC between LSU and Middle Tennessee State. And there was a huge one last night, Iowa and uh, West Virginia. I think something like it. I think it, uh, Iowa was 26 out of 31, and I think uh, West Virginia shot five free throws in the game. So some fans are feeling like this has a professional well, wrestling predetermined type feel, like they, they got to line up Caitlin Clark and LSU again. I mean, I get it in the LSU game, but when you went into halftime and you looked at the stat line and you saw how many of their players had two fouls, it made sense for them to come out in the third quarter and dish it inside to Angel Reese. Yeah. And all those fouls were legit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. and, and so that's what happened last night at UCLA Creighton. You just dump it inside, and if you're going to try to defend it, you're going to get in foul trouble. Yeah. Well, Iowa, uh, their fans said that that was uh, West Virginia's strategy was to kind of pull and yank and kind of, you know, get under their skin a little bit. And so, Caitlin Clark, uh, we were talking about a while ago. I don't remember. I mean, I covered all, all I really covered of her was that national championship game. I watched her courtside. I don't remember being her as talkative and as foul mouthed. <laughs> this year, uh, or last year, I should say, as she is this year. She's letting some F-bombs fly on the court, and and her dad is saying, hey, you know, calm down, sweetie. Well, uh, <laughs> and, and that goes back to the LSU-South Carolina game, and you're reading Angel Reese's lips, and like, you know, and then, of course, the aftermath of that, and what, you know, Mulkey would uh, pick on somebody your own size. I mean, if you're down on court level, and you hear these girls talking to each other on both teams uh, you know, most nights, 
I mean, look, they, they're just as salty as, as the guys are in basketball. Well, I, I think that that's – look, you want it to be the same as the men? Here it is. I mean, Saturday, for example, when uh, Middle Tennessee State, they started fouling out. I mean, the crowd was left, right, left, right, sit down, you know, just like they did in the men, just like I was watching – Dwayne Shinches from Florida or whatever, you know, in the 80s. It's got that energy now that used to only be reserved for the men's game. Now in the women's game, you got your heroes, your villains, your storylines. That's what's uh, making it really yeah, good. Yeah, you're getting a, a, a – it's a very much like the men. And, the, and these girls are – I don't know if you want to say they're mimicking what they've seen for years, but um, uh, it, it's it's not as genteel or, or sweet as uh, you, you think it is down there. Um <laughs> LSU baseball, uh, did you think they'd be where they're at right now after two SEC weekends? And now you're heading to Arkansas. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, two and four, no. Uh, I mean, I guess it's only one game difference, maybe three and three. Uh, but two and four, especially Mississippi State, uh, was, not a, was not ranked, I don't think, when LSU played them. Florida, you know, traditional powerhouse there. Um, it's so, two-run rule games. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the deal. Um, you know, really, really pulling for Thatcher Hurd. Really liked the, the Hurd family, his dad and, and Thatcher. They're great people. He's all to a slow start. Although he's not getting run support either, right? I mean, I think he was doing pretty well on Sunday. LSU just wasn't scoring any runs. Uh, certainly, Jay Johnson doesn't get thrown out of the game if LSU's 4-2 and two in the SEC. Uh, I think that's built up frustration over what's been going on. Um, suddenly, Nate Yeski, uh, you know, people are – Okay, is this going to work out type deal with the pitching staff? And Look, they, they lost a ton of people. You know, they lost, uh, you know, Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan and Gavin Dugas and Braden Joubert. They lost all these sticks. So there's going to be some growing pains. I mean, the guy just won a national championship, I don't know how many months ago, nine months ago well, or whatever. And, and then you, you got people questioning how good these portal uh, entries into the program actually were. A lot, of, a lot of people piling on and scratching and looking for answers. But um, – you know, maybe he's got. Uh, you know, you don't want to pair, uh, compare Jay Johnson to, to Paul Maneri, but maybe uh, he's going to be a late finisher and and, and have uh, some later months uh, the way uh, Coach Maneri used to have. Well, last year's team, I remember there were some ugly moments. I remember a Sunday game at Auburn. I remember certainly right down the street here when they had the nine-run lead against Mississippi State and blew it. So yeah, I, it, it's it's a long year. It's going to take twists and turns left and right, and uh, you just. You stick with it, and you got to win five games to go to Omaha. That that never changes. Five wins to go to Omaha. Can you do it? We'll see. Anything you want to add on LSU football before we head out? Uh, not really. Uh, the, the spring game behind us here. I guess that's in uh, three Saturdays. That's it. But but also in a couple of Saturdays. Tell them about your event. Well, it's the same day. It's April thirteenth. We've got uh, for all you old farts out there who like your classic rock. The, and I'm representing. I got my red rock and blue shirt underneath here. We've got a uh, Red Rock and Blue spring kickoff concert down the street here at Chelsea's Live. Great live music venue here in Baton Rouge. The Atomic Punks, the the only Van Halen tribute band who, who has been endorsed by the band itself, uh, playing the early David Lee Roth 1978 to 1984 first six albums uh, at Chelsea's Live. Hell Dorados, Joey Halloway, and some other good friends of mine will open the show with some hard rock covers. And so, uh, cheap ticket, uh, you, we, we are supporting our local military charities, Blue Star Mothers of Louisiana, uh, Gulf Coast Veterans, um, kind of kick off before we get into our summer events. But that'll be April 13th, Chelsea's Live. Get your tickets at redrockandblue.com or chelseyslive.com. Uh, I'll be there, and uh, we'll hope to see a bunch of you guys out there as well. Uh, it's always a great event, and Chelsea's is an, uh, an awesome uh, music venue, and um, uh, been to multiple shows there, and uh, it's easy to get in and out of. And um, I actually like the taco truck that's usually parked out front too. So <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, we both wore navy today. I don't know. I don't know why that yeah. uh, came about, but yeah. here we yeah. are. All right, uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks to Jacques Ducey for filling in for Buddy Sanji, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.